ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اعاذنا الله واياكم من النار my beloved brothers and sisters approximately 10 days before we enter into the month of ramadan Year in, year out, we receive reminders one after the other in order to take heed, in order to wake up, right? Yesterday, I received two messages around the same time. One of them was a good friend of mine called Sohel, who was showing me all of the orders that people were taking before the month of Ramadan. And at the same time, I seen a couple of tweets and I'm going to read out the tweet so that we can perhaps draw a comparison. The tweet stated, they, who's they? The Palestinians. They were gathered together for humanitarian aid only to be targeted and shot by the Israeli army. This wasn't an aerial bombardment, but rather a ground level assassination. How many were killed? 104 innocent civilians. This is what's happening, my brothers and my sisters. There are our brothers and sisters, not just in Palestine, who are going through a lot, right? While we are extremely fortunate. We are advantaged, preparing how we are going to embrace and welcome the month of Ramadan. In this message, my brothers and my sisters, it stated chicken and mixed vegetable rolls. If you want 100, you got to pay X amount, 55 pounds. You want 50, 35 pounds. Meat kebab, two kilograms of lamb karahi and whatever else. This is us in comparison to them, right? Think about it for a moment, my brothers and my sisters. What has happened throughout the years? How many reminders do we need year in, year out in order to wake up and to take heed? So I want to stand a little bit over the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah azza wa jal tells us about those after they have been thrown into the hellfire, and they are begging for another chance. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? أَوَلَمْ نُعَمِّرْكُمْ مَا يَتَذَكَّرُ فِيهِ مَنْ تَذَكَّرُ وَجَاءَكُمُ النَّذِيرُ It will be said to them, you had too many opportunities. You had many years to take heed, to make change, to wake up from your deep sleep. Ali ibn Abi Talib would say, النَّاسُ نِيَامُ فَإِذَا مَا تُنْتَبَهُ The people are fast asleep. When they pass away, they are placed eight feet down into the ground. That's when they begin to take heat. But it's a little too late now. حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَ أَحَدَهُمُ الْمَوْتِ When they are struck with death, the angel of death rips your soul out of your body. 
قال رب يرجعون he begins to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh Allah take me back give me another chance so I can pray so I can do this I can do that right Ibn al-Jawzi rahmatullahi alayhi would say لو قيل لأهل القبور تمنوا if it was said to the people in the grave make a wish make a wish what do you think their wish would be my brothers and my sisters لتمنوا يوما في رمضان they would begin to wish for just one more day in the month of Ramadan. Right? It is then said, didn't the nadir come to you? If you translate literally what a nadir means, it means the warner. Those warnings, didn't it come to you? Abdullah ibn Abbas and other than him, they said this warning was the white hairs that began to appear on your face. The white hairs that began to appear on your face. Others mentioned Mawtul Aqarib, the death of your relatives. The death of your relatives that began to pass away around us. We bury, we wash the deceased, we carry them on our shoulders. But then, my brothers and my sisters, we act like this reminder is for someone else. We live a life as if we are guaranteed to reach the month of Ramadan. And we're going to pray and we're going to fast. Over the years, my brothers and my sisters, I would write down some of the high profile incidents that would take place in and around the month of Ramadan. Many, many years ago, I was sitting in the gathering of our Shaykh, Shaykh Abdul Zaq al Badr, in the Prophet Wasallam's Masjid. And the Sheikh told us a story. The story was the following. He said he received a message where one of his African students was going to be performing all of these da'wah programs. This lecture here, that lecture there. And this is before the month of Ramadan. And it made the Sheikh very happy. We're in the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ. However, my brothers and my sisters, as he was hoping to acquire all of this reward in the month of Ramadan, he passed away. And this really, really struck me, my brothers and my sisters, because I had a schedule as well of all the programs I was going to be carrying out in the month of Ramadan and outside the month of Ramadan. It left me to tears, my brothers and my sisters. Right? We plan, we want, right? But how many a time does it actually turn out to be the way that we want it? Some of you guys have heard of Muhammad Ali, Calcius Clay. I think that's how you say his name, right? June the 3rd, 2016. It was a couple of days before the month of Ramadan, my brothers and my sisters. He was the undisputed world champion, the boxer. Right? Between 1974 and 1978. Also considered as the world's greatest ever boxer. He used to be referred to as the greatest. But the greatest boxer, my brothers and my sisters, wasn't in control of his fate. Just before the month of Ramadan, he passes away. Right? I'm sure some of us also remember our brother, Ali Banat. Right? who became known as the one who was gifted with cancer. A young man, multi-millionaire he was, passed away just before the month of Ramadan. Right? We have been affected by the corona. Everyone here either has been affected or knows someone that was affected. Last couple of Ramadans, my brothers and my sisters, we remember exactly how it was. Weren't these reminders for us to wake up from? You remember also, my brothers and my sisters, the Ukrainian war that was taking place where? In Africa, in the Middle East, round the corner from here, my brothers and my sisters. It's in Europe. How many of us, my brothers and my sisters, thought to themselves that maybe next year it could be us? But again, these reminders that we hear about year in, year out, 
how many of us actually take heed? Right? My beloved brothers and sisters, do you know what it means to reach the month of Ramadan? Just to be able to reach it. Talha ibn Ubaidillah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Right? He saw a dream. In this dream were two individuals who embraced Al-Islam the exact same time. One of them, my brothers and my sisters, he was killed as a martyr. And we know the reward of being killed as a martyr on the battlefield. His wound on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, لونه لون دم وريحه ريح مسك. It will show as blood on Yawm Al-Qiyamah and then it will have the scent, the smell of musk. And the ayat, the verses are many. The hadith that talk about the virtue of this, right? He died in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I think it's maybe about time that I need to make a disclaimer, right? Jihad is part of our religion, just in case someone wants to take it out of context. And I'm not going to bite my tongue. However, there are what? Rules and regulations, right? And we're not with what ISIS does, just in case someone wants to take it out and make us look like as if we're recruiting. It's part of our religion. And I'm not going to be apologetic about it. So this companion, he died as a martyr. And then there was another companion who lived for another year. Right? In the dream, Talha ibn Ubaidillah, as they were standing in front of the gates of Al-Jannah. One of the gatekeepers came out and took the one who lived an extra year. Not the martyr, but the one who lived an extra year. And this confused Talha ibn Ubaidillah. You'd expect the one who died in the way of Allah Azza wa Jal, he will be entered into Al-Jannah first. But that wasn't the case. Right? And then he came and took the martyr. Talha ibn Ubaidillah hoping that he is next. It was told, your time hasn't arrived yet. He wakes up from his dream and then begins to tell everybody. And then he reaches the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to them, why are you guys amazed? Why are you guys amazed? Right? Alaytha qad makatha hadha ba'dahu sana. Didn't he live for an extra year? قالوا بلا. He said yes. وأدرك رمضان فصامه and he managed to reach Ramadan and he fasted in the month of Ramadan. قالوا بلا. They said yes. وصلى كذا وكذا سجدة في السنة and he prostrated all of these prostrations throughout the year. And then he said صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه فما بينهما أبعد ما بين السماء والأرض. The difference between those two, يعني the martyr and the one who lived for an extra year, is between heavens and earth. For just being able to reach the next Ramadan and he did all those acts of worship, my brothers and my sisters. What did Ibn al-Jawzi say? Tallah, he swore by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لو قيل لأهل القبور تمنوا لتمنوا يوم في رمضان. If it was said to the people of the grave, make a wish, they will wish for an extra day in the month of Ramadan. Many years ago, I reflected on this and I was trying to understand why though, why? Until I came across the statement of Ibrahim al nakhai who said, Sawmu yawmin min Ramadan to fast one day in the month of Ramadan afdalu min alfi yawm It is better than a thousand days outside the month of Ramadan. Wa tasbiha, just one tasbiha, subhanallah, it is better than a thousand tasbihat outside the month of Ramadan, my beloved brothers and sisters. Right. أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى المجتبى. My beloved brothers and sisters.
another Ramadan, another opportunity. Right? It's a lifeline that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is throwing away. Right? It's an opportunity that we must take advantage of. Like I mentioned at the beginning, how many reminders do we need in order for us to wake up? How do you feel, my brothers and my sisters, that if I said that some of our brothers and sisters, where they may be in Palestine, where they may be in Syria, where they may be in Sudan, and everywhere else where our brothers and sisters are suffering in, perhaps maybe they are suffering because of something that we have done, because of a sin that we have fallen into. Where did I get this from? All of us are smart enough to know the incident that happened in the Battle of Uhud. When the Messenger Sallallahu placed 50 of his companions on that Jabal, Jabal Rumah, and he placed Abdullah ibn Jubair in charge of them. And the Messenger Sallallahu said, don't get off this mountain, even if you see eagles snatching them off the battleground. Don't get off, stay where you are. But when they saw the ghanima, the war booty, they said, al-ghanima, al-ghanima. And they began to dispute with one another. And it's mentioned in Surah Ali Imran. Right? مِن بَعْدِ مَا أَرَاكُمْ مَا تُحِبُّونَ Allah says, you disobeyed Allah after he showed you that which you love. You're shown a blessing. And this is the worst type, or one of the worst types of disobedience. When you are blessed, you disobey Allah Azza wa Jal. Upon being what? blessed with these ni'am, these bounties. And that happens a lot. And you know better, my brothers and my sisters. Right? What happened? Because of something that they done, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's helmet was smashed. His face was gashed. And his tooth was crushed. Because of a sin that they fell into, my brothers and my sisters. What does that show us? Right? The distance between them was what? Huh? Where they were in the battleground and it ended up affecting them. That because of something that we do, it could end up affecting them. So Allah Azza wa Jal gives us this opportunity to be able to get ready, to enter into the month of Ramadan, to do all of these acts of worship and then we end up wasting it. You know my brothers and my sisters, the month of Ramadan is a month that can get you into Al-Jannah and can also get you into the hellfire. The hadith of when the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam walked into the minbar and he said, Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. So they asked him, why did you say Ameen three times? One of those Ameens were, Raghi ma'anf. Man adraka Ramadan, falam yughfar lah, fadakhal al-nar. Angel Jibreel made a dua and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ameen to it. One of those duas were, he managed to reach Ramadan, Right? And he didn't take advantage of it, and because of it, he was entered into the hellfire. Right? My brothers and my sisters, to be a bit more frank, what happens on Coventry Road is become a chanrat on the most glorious nights of the year, the glorious, greatest nights of the year. All that intermingling that takes place. He's trying to catch her eye. She's trying to catch his eye. Dressing to impress. Rizzing away. Wallahi, in Leicester, we would hear crazy stories and I would feel embarrassed to even what? Verify that information. Last year when we were hearing all this craziness taking place. People looking to stab one another on the greatest nights of the year, my brothers and my sisters. Blasting music, revving the cars, making so much noise. Is this really being thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now you compare this to someone called Abu Sahba. His wife Mu'adha says Abu Sahba. Right? And by the way, he was a tabi'i from the students of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and ibn Abbas. And the wife used to study with Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha Mu'adha. She says, Kana Abu Sahba. He would pray so much and the only way he was able to get to his bed was zahfan. Crawling to his bedside, my brothers and my sisters. It's a month when we're meant to be exhausting ourselves because we might never ever get this opportunity again. 
ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا اصرف عنا عذاب جهنم إن عذابها كان غراما إنها ساءت مستقرا ومقاما ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم انصر إخواننا في فلسطين وفي سوريا وفي السودان وفي غير ذلك من الأماكن ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحانك الله وبحمدك شهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك وأخم الصلاة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته One thing I forgot to mention in the khutbah was how we are in the month of Sha'ban and the month of Sha'ban is the month of training yourself for the month of Ramadan that's why the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would fast so much Many of us, we struggle in the month of Ramadan because we never got in that routine before the month of Ramadan. Perhaps it's maybe the time now that we need to get rid of some of our social media apps because the social media is the one that's getting us into a lot of trouble. Even starting off with Qiyam layl right now, praying in the night, fasting in the day, so that once Ramadan kicks in, we are, inshallah ta'ala, in the best possible gear. Assalamu alaikum. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم ملك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الزراط المستقيم زراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين سبح اسم ربك العلي الذي خلق فسوي والذي قدر فهدي والذي أخرج المرعي فجعله غثاء نحوي سنقرئك فلا تنسي إلا ما شيء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفي ونيسرك لليسر فذكر إن نفعت الذكر سيذكر من يخشي ويتجنبها لشخي الذي يصلى النار الكبر ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحي قد أفلح من تزكي وذكر اسم ربه فصلي بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقي إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولي صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم ملك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الزراط المستقيم زراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين هل أتيك حديث الغاشية وجوه يومئذ خاشعة عاملة ناصبة تصلي نارا حامية تسقي من عين نانية ليس لهم طعام إلا من ضريع لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع وجوه يومئذ ناعمة لسعيها راضية في جنة عالية لا تسمع فيها لاغية فيها عين جارية فيها سرر مرفوعة وأكواب موضوعة ونمارق مصفوفة وزرابي مبثوثة أفلا ينظرون إلى الإبل كيف خلقت 
وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سطحت فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمزيطر إلا من تولي وكفر فيعذبه الله العذاب الأكبر إن إلينا إيابهم ثم إن علينا حسابهم الله أكبر